Welcome to the Witchy Work Wishes podcast, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. Welcome to Witchy Work Wishes. I'm your host, Charlene, and today we are making some lists. Specific lists for the holiday season coming up. And not just any regular gift ideas for our list, but holiday gift ideas for our witchy family and friends. First, I always like to pull some things I did over the weekend to help with my own personal craft. Now, my element is definitely the hearth and home. So, you know, the cooler season of fall and the oncoming winter months really do spark a true, deep level of joy in me, and it all ties directly into my craft. This weekend, though, it was planning. Planning my holiday meal schedule with everyone that's going to be home, writing out grocery lists, and thinking about how I'll be incorporating my kitchen witchcraft into each home-baked meal. Now, just the act of making the list made me smile. No kidding. Anticipating what my home will sound like with the boys back, you know, their voices, the sounds of Xbox, the giggles, the smiles, the comfort, and the family closeness, it all just made me smile. Just thinking of it. And I know, I know I get to work my magic into the meals I am sharing and how extra special that is going to be, especially since it is for my two boys whom I always want to protect and give extra power to. Now, one of the things I am doing with my boys this holiday is the DNA kit. It's going to be a big reveal on Christmas Eve. And yes, I am pagan. I have always celebrated Christmas and Yule, though, and there are just no religious parts to it for for me. It's all about family and traditions. Um, So you're going to hear me using the word Christmas over the next month, probably pretty interchangeably with Yule. Um, All right, so I sent the kits off for me and my two boys, and I got mine back already. I am not super surprised at the results. My mom has extensive history with genealogy, you know, going back to the 1500s for us. It is her passion. It is what gives her a pep in her step. And it's something that truly brings her lots and lots of joy. Saying she has spent hours on the research and documentation of our heritage does honestly not even come close. It's years, 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 years. Now, from her efforts and hard work, we can track our bloodline back over 500 years, and that includes all the documents and proof of who married who and what kids they had and who the kids married and so on and so forth. So for my results, I am clumped into one area. I'm not scattered around the world with little hints of different cultures. Mine um, came back with 10 areas, pretty much right next to each other. (laughs) The top being Scotland, 30%. Then England, France, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Germany, Ireland, and Finland. There I am, a little Viking of sorts. Again, I'm I'm not surprised with genealogy, but super fun to read exactly what the breakdown is. Now, what will be extra fun is getting the DNA for the boys. And my mom and I are going to make it very ceremonial and a big part of our Christmas Eve this year. And I literally cannot wait. It is going to be so much fun. I, the moon, our beautiful November moon, was nice and full this past Sunday and Monday. And today she is starting her waning descent. Now this is known as the gibbous stage with waning. And you may feel, you know, that big rush kind of letting down now. Things are contracting a little bit from being big and expansive this past weekend. Now, since the holidays are on our mind, let's grab our list of who needs what and jump into it. Christmas and Yule, it's here. It's literally right around the corner. And if you have not already jumped on your holiday shopping or what you'll be making for your gifts this year, I really do hope this episode helps. Now, I pulled 22 of the main types of witches that most witches will fall into one way or another. I know it's a category. I know it's a label. But if you're looking for gift ideas, I really do think breaking it down will help. So I'm going to go alphabetically with the following types of witches. Ancestry, ceremonial, traditional, chaos, city, cosmic, cottage, crystal, dianic witch, divination witch, 
Eclectic Witch, Elemental, Fairy, Fire, Green, Hedge, Kitchen, Lunar, Sea Witch, Secular Witch, Solar, Storm, and Swamp Witch. All right, let's go. Let's get right into it. And what are some good gift ideas for each of those type of practices? First one, Ancestry Witchcraft. This is also called Hereditary Witchcraft. And really it is the practice of the craft being handed down by our ancestors. It's the bloodline. And it's a power that is passed down from our elders. Now it's tough, right? (laughs) Since witchcraft was hidden and kept secret by many in past history, for good reason, witches were hunted down. But gifts for the hereditary witch can include, honestly, what what I'm doing right now with me and my boys, those uh, DNA kits. If that is something they already have or have done, Maybe customize a family tree art piece. You can certainly include other witchy elements here. Uh, Maybe a subscription to a genealogy website. Now, if you know uh, where they mainly come from or what part of their history they are specifically drawn to, books on genealogy and ancestry would be great. You could also gift an experience. Let's let's say they are tied to their Irish roots. Um, You could plan a dinner out at a special Irish restaurant and give them some special personalized, excuse me, Irish jewelry, even better if you can add like an an ancestral symbol um, for the jewelry or maybe even a birthstone. For the ancestry witch, you can arrange for a consultation with a professional. would literally offer up my mom (laughs) for this, although she does not do it professionally. But you know, someone to help them break through any research barriers and provide guidance on their family tree. You know, along that line, you could also sign them up for a workshop class. All right, what about the ceremonial witch? So I actually combined ceremonial witch and traditional witchcraft for the gift-giving purposes because they are so closely tied together. Although looked at as you know separate practices, I guess, there are a lot of similarities. The ceremonial witch is just that, all about the ritual of the practice and the basics. A traditional witch is all about old magic and pulling from history to do their modern day work. Now with both the ceremonial witch and the traditional witch, it's about tradition. So for gift giving, I would focus on traditional ritual tools. Athame, a ritual knife used in ceremonial magic. Chalice, often used for holding liquids, right, during rituals. Wand, a tool used to direct energy during ceremonies. Altar decorations would be great here too. Crystals, candles, cloths. Books are another good gift for the traditional witch. Not reading books, but I mean, reading books are great too. (laughs) But, um, you know, blank canvases that they can use for a grimoire or book of shadows. High quality herbs for magical purposes or, you know, incense blends associated with ceremonial practices are nice gifts. Uh, tarot and oracle decks are good, and of course, customized items. Um, maybe like a ceremonial robe with their initials, uh, engraved tools, or handcrafted jewelry. Okay, next I've got Chaos Witch. Now, a Chaos Witch is going to draw their powers directly from the energy of chaos. Gifts for this type of practicing witch are going to be Things that tie into music, maybe, some storms, events, and things that might, you know, clash a little bit. Since this type of practice pulls from so many (laughs) different things, a subscription box might be great here because they will get something different and new each time they open it, and they can pull and use the different tools when needed in their craft. Now, see, other good things for the Chaos Witch would be a set of crystals, you know, known for maybe their chaotic or versatile energies. Things um, in this line are going to be good, like um, Labradorite, Fluorite, or Rainbow Obsidian. Maybe grab a tarot deck that features diverse and unpredictable imagery, or one that is known for its ability to tap into the chaotic energies of the universe. I see Chaos Witchcraft, you know, Small Cauldron for ritual work and, you know, or decoration would be good. And that's a classic. Cauldrons are classic, versatile tool in many practices. I see scent and ambiance are essential in many magical practices. Certainly with chaos, witchcraft, look for incense or candles with unconventional scents or colors that the chaotic witch is going to be drawn to. 
I know I keep mentioning jewelry, but something featuring symbols associated with chaos magic or symbols that resonate with that particular individual, such as a sigil or other mystical design would be good. All right, what about the city witch? If you're buying gifts for a city or urban witch, you might be able to focus more on some modern stuff and tie into some of the chaos gifts that we just went over. You know, the city witch will tap into a bunch of energy from others in the city that they actually live in. Now, this is a pretty resourceful craft in that the witch has adapted to perform her potions and spells and rituals in a reasonably small space. So it is an adapted craft using less traditional tools sometimes, you know, maybe things that you'll find naturally in the forest and garden just aren't available for a city witch, um, or maybe they're just not drawn to it. So what can we do for gifts? If city witches do not have access to big outdoor spaces, a compact herb garden kit might be perfect for them. You know, grab the standard typical herbs like lavender, mint, or sage um, to get them started off. It allows them to grow their own magical herbs indoors. Let's see, art, you know, look for artwork that combines cityscapes with crystals or other, you know, mystical elements. This can be a unique and aesthetic addition to their living space, blending their love for the urban environment with magical themes. Now, our city witches might like a tarot deck that incorporates elements of city life or urban landscapes. This can add personal touches to their divination practices and certainly reflect, reflects their connection to the city. Now, you guys know I love my essential oil diffusers. A sleek, modern essential oil diffuser can be a great gift for the city witch. Choose essential oils that are associated with magical properties, such as the lavender for relaxation, maybe frankincense for purification. Uh, for books, you know, look for a book that combines urban living with witchcraft, providing maybe some tips, some spells, and rituals tailored for city dwellers. This can be a handy guide for integrating magic into a busy urban lifestyle. And you can always grab a candle for the city witch. Spell candles in colors and scents that align with their magical preferences are going to be perfect here. And personalize them with some symbols or intentions that are meaningful to the city witch and their magical identity. All right, next I've got Cosmic Witch. Now this is the practice in witchcraft that is all about astrology. It's all about astronomy, our beautiful moon, and the stars. And for gift giving, this might be one of the easiest <laughs> because there are so many options. Now a Cosmic Witch will have their practice around the energy of the planets. They may connect with deities, associated with the stars and planets. They may practice based on astrology. There are certainly different levels, but a cosmic witchcraft practice is all about the sky, and they will have a deep connection to the celestial and natural elements. So consider giving gifts that align with their spiritual practices and interests. Look for jewelry featuring celestial symbols like moons and stars planets and galaxies, items made from materials like moonstone or labradorite can certainly add an extra mystical touch. A beautiful illustrated tarot deck with cosmic or celestial motifs um, can be a wonderful addition to a cosmic witch's collection. Uh, for crystal sets, you know, look for crystals associated with cosmic energies such as amethyst, say selenite, or labradorite. These crystals are believed to enhance spiritual connections and cosmic awareness. Now, a planner or a calendar that incorporates lunar phases and astrological events can help the cosmic witch align their activities with the cycles. Let's see, the cosmic witch might um, like decorative items for their sacred space, such as maybe tapestries, throw pillows, wall art. Of course, we all love tea. <laughs> we can give a gift selection of herbal teas that have that, you know, celestial or cosmic themes. Uh, blends uh, for this would be like maybe chamomile, lavender, other herbs associated with cosmic energy. Now for ritual candles, go for celestial colors like silver, gold, deep blues, things along those lines. Uh, you can also almost always find candles shaped like moons or stars. 
Now, if your cosmic witch enjoys studying astrology, a book on astrology, or a, maybe a specialized journal for tracking astro astrological events could be a great gift. Or maybe even a custom star map that captures the alignment of the stars on a significant date, such as their birthday or another important date. All right, cottage witch. This is known as the home witch. <laughs> I'm sure it speaks to all of us on some level. Can we blend in kitchen witch here? Yes. Can we blend in hearth witch here? Of course. Green witch too, really, right? It, it's all a part of the cottage witchcraft in a sense. Think cozy here. Think about the witch that practices her craft in the privacy of her own home for the benefit of those who live in it and for the benefit of the home itself. The cottage witch's home is sacred and protected. So for gifts, I would lean towards nature, love for herbalism, appreciation for the mystical. First easy one is an herbal garden kit. You know, something with various herbs for the witch to grow at home, like lavender, sage, rosemary, and chamomile. Uh, make sure the, the kit includes soil and pots and instructions for planting, even though they probably won't need it, <laughs> but it's nice to have. And if you can, um, handmade scented candles with natural ingredients are going to be great for the cottage witch. Something infused with herbs or essential oils are perfect. Now, if you can't personally make them, Look for candles that are specifically designed for rituals, meditation, or maybe relaxation. The cottage witch probably already has a cauldron, but a small cauldron can be a symbolic and practical gift either way. It can be used for mixing herbs, incense, or you know, even as a container for burning charcoal during rituals. And I don't think a cottage witch can have too many cauldrons. Just, just my opinion. <laughs> For the witch who loves to collect and use herbs, a drying rack would be great here. It allows them to dry you know, their magical herbs um, and use them in cooking or whatever spell they're doing. Um, let's not forget a broomstick. A miniature broomstick, also known as a besom, is a traditional tool for witches. It's not just you know, decorative, but it can also be used symbolically in rituals or you know for cleansing spaces. Now, a handmade wand, perhaps one carved from wood or adorned with crystals, can be a powerful and personal gift for a witch, too. You can find artists who specialize in creating magical tools. Etsy is actually amazing here. Um, let's see, also a blank journal. You know, a beautifully crafted book can be used as a recipe book for the cottage witch or any type of journal to record their spells, rituals, and reflections. All right, next is the crystal witch. Now, crystal witchcraft, this practice in our craft is really about connecting to the actual energy and power of stones and crystals. And yes, they each have something unique and specific to them. I think crystal witches will have their favorites, you know, the ones that they connect to the strongest. So while that might be a great place to start, we don't always want to just add when gifting, right? We want to give something of meaning that brings value to their practice. We can put together a set of crystals with a specific purpose, like um, uh, include crystals for protection, black charlemagne, um, intention, amethyst, positive energy like citrine, but make sure to provide information about each crystal's property and uses when you do it. A uh, crystal ball can be a great and beautiful and mystical gift for scrying and divination. For that, I would look for one made from clear quartz or other crystals. A jewelry, oh my goodness, <laughs> we've got lots of, lots of options with a crystal witch. Uh, pendants, earrings, bracelets made with crystals like rose quartz, moonstone, labradorite. These can all be wonderful, meaningful gifts. There are crystal grid sets that would make great gifts too. You can include a sacred geometry grid and a selection of crystals that would work well together for specific intentions like love or abundance and protection. Now, your crystal witch probably already has a bunch of research books, but you could gift a book on crystals and their metaphysical properties. This can be a helpful resource, of course, for a crystal witch to expand their knowledge and enhance their practice. Now, candles and crystals go well together. Look for a candle holder maybe that is embedded with crystals. This can serve as both a decorative and functional item for ritual work or meditation. 
A crystal storage box um, would be great. Maybe consider one with compartments to help organize a growing crystal collection. If your witch likes to take baths, look for bath salts, oils, soaps infused with crystals, things like that. Um, for something, you know, maybe more personal, create a custom necklace with a crystal of their choice. Include a personalized charm or pendant, you know, for an extra touch. And of course, oracle cards featuring beautiful illustrations of crystals can be fun and insightful addition to a crystal witch's divination tools. Next, I've got the Dianic Witch. So Dianic Witchcraft is a type of practice that is all about the divine feminine and focuses on it. It's called Dianic because most in the line of this witchcraft worship the goddess Diana. Now, Diana is a Roman goddess of wild animals and the hunt. Her counterpart is the Greek goddess Artemis. She is often linked to Selene and Hecate when talking about the moon, too. Now, Dianic witches typically follow a feminist and goddess-centered tradition, so things along this line will support their craft. I think a statue or figurine representing a goddess central to Dianic practices would be great, you know, such as Diana herself or Artemis or another goddess associated with feminine empowerment, um, and really anything in nature would be perfect. So elegant candle holders would be good, and candles and colors associated with the goddesses or, you know, the elements that are often used in the rituals would be good. Crystals, you know, go for the ones that align with Dianic traditions, such as moonstone, amethyst, or rose quartz. Now, Dianic witches often incorporate herbs and incense into their rituals, so you could consider a set of high-quality herbs or maybe a selection of natural incense that aligns with their practice. You know, for books, look for books written by reputable authors on Dianic witchcraft. This could include works on the history of the tradition, maybe rituals, or, you know, practical guidelines for incorporating Dianic practices into their daily life. Now, if you know which tools they use on their altar, maybe consider getting them a customized artist craft athame, a chalice, or a pentacle. Now, personalized tools really do mean a lot, especially when they are coming from someone they love. So anytime you can add that extra step, <laughs> that extra touch, I would. Now, the moon is inherently feminine. And a calendar that tracks the moon phases could be useful for, uh, for a Dianic witch. Now, this one might be a little bit more expensive, but if there is a woman's retreat that you could gift your Dianic witch or, you know, some type of female experience, such as a workshop to empower them, this could provide an opportunity for them to you know, deepen their knowledge and connect with like-minded individuals and could make an amazing gift. All right, divination witchcraft. Divination witches take many forms and really many crafts incorporate some type of divination, right? It's the practice of seeking knowledge and guidance through other means. We have meditation as a form of divination. We have scrying, astrology and tarot and the use of a pendulum. So gifting in this area of witchcraft really does have a lot of options. You know, let's, let's go classic first. Crystal ball. <laughs> a crystal ball made from material like quartz or obsidian is going to work best here. Pendulums um, are great too. These are used for dousing and can be a helpful tool for gaining insight. Now, choosing one made from a crystal or material that aligns with the witch's energy is going to be best here. Also, we have runes. Yes, please. <laughs> this is an ancient divination tool and would make a wonderful gift for a divination witch. Rune stones are engraved with symbols. Just look for a set crafted from, you know, some natural materials like wood or stone. Now, many divination witches use herbs and incense to enhance their practices. So, you know, consider a set of herbs or incense blends with properties associated with divination. A toolbox, absolutely. You know, a beautifully crafted box to store their divination tools can be both practical and visually appealing. Now back to journals again. High quality journal for recording insights and dreams and divination results is a great gift. You can even include a set of nice pens and pencils. 
candles, of course. <laughs> Choose ones with specific scents and colors associated with uh, divination and psychic abilities. And also, you know, meditation and relaxation tools. You know, this would be great for the divination witch. Things like meditation cushions or soothing music. Essential oils can enhance um, a witch's ability to focus and connect with their intuition. And, you know, back to the class or workshop, one focused on a specific divination or technique or a broader mystical subject would be great here. All right, what about eclectic witchcraft? Well, that is all of us, right? <laughs> it's a little of this, it's a little of that, part of this craft and part of that craft. It's a melting pot of all things witchy. There is no one religion, there is no one singular practice. It's a little from the Greek history and a little from the Irish history, and then maybe a little Norse is pulled in for parts. An eclectic witch has their own unique makeup of lots of little things. So how do we buy gifts for this type of witch? Well, have had it, right? Try to, try to be personal. Um, you know who you are buying for. This type of witch is drawing inspiration from various traditions and practices. So you have a pretty wide range of options. And really, instead of repeating a bunch of things I've already listed, grab anything from what I am saying because an eclectic witch may tap into one or all of them. A collection of crystals with different properties, herb kits, tarot decks, oracle decks, candles, incense, and burners, books. Now, you can be specific and do one for shadow, maybe a separate one for grimoire, uh, jewelry, altar cloths, witchy artwork. And you know what? Subscriptions. A subscription here would probably be amazing. Something different that they can get each month to keep their eclectic mind working. All right, next I've got the elemental witch. So elemental witchcraft, you know, we've gone over the elements during the past year as they really are a staple to most practices. So to say someone might just be an elemental witch, meh. You know, again, it's probably something incorporated into their practice like it is for most of us. You know, that said, elemental witchcraft is about the four specific elements, earth, air, fire, and water. So for gift giving, that is what we can focus on. You know, for earth, think about crystals and gemstones. Choose ones associated with grounding and earth energy, like black charlemagne, smoky quartz, and jasper. Potted plants and herbs are good for the earth element. And, you know, you can give a gift a small potted plant or a collection of herbs that can be used in their, in their practices. So for the air element, think about feathers, which I love. Uh, natural feathers or decorative feather quills can represent the air element and enhance their ritual tools. Incense is a big part of the air element. High quality incense is really, really key. Um, there are a variety of scents that can be uh, great gifts to enhance the atmosphere during their rituals and spell work. Now fire, candles, candles, and more candles. You know, select candles and colors associated with the fire element though. You're going to go red, orange, yellow. Now, beeswax or soy candles with natural scents are really excellent choices here. Artwork might be good here too, you know, for the fire element. A piece of art or decoration featuring flame or a fire symbol, you know, that can be visually striking and a very meaningful gift. Now, fire witchcraft is considered its own craft, and I do have that coming up, in case you're wondering. <laughs> um, all right, last one, water. All right, water element, you know, sea, no, sea, sea cells? Seashells. <laughs> Collecting seashells um, or gifting a beautiful shell shaped, oh my gosh, <laughs> like a tongue twister, shell shaped accessory um, can really connect to the water element. Now, for divination tools, items like a scrying mirror or a set of water themed tarot decks, tarot cards can be both practical and symbolic. Now, I personally love little fountains, they can be very helpful with meditation and relaxation too. Fairy witchcraft! Cue the fairies! Yay! All right, if you are shopping for a fairy witch, you are gifting someone who inherently loves nature spirits. They more than likely love woodland creatures, nature in general, and fairies. Not only do they love them, they work directly with fairies and the fae. Now, shopping and gift ideas here can be made very, very personal. Look for fairy-themed jewelry, 
um, delicate fairy or winged pendant necklaces, earrings maybe with fairy or magical creature motifs, bracelets adorned with mystical charms. Look for witchy accessories like, you know, unique hats with fairy embellishments, um, embroidered or lace edged velvet cloaks maybe, or scarves or shawls. If you want to go home decorations, you know, try fairy lights or enchanted lanterns. I personally love these in my yard. Crystal ball or scrying mirror for divination and fairy themed wall art or, you know, tapestries. Now, most fairy witches will use herbs and crystals in their practices. So a collection of herbs for magical potions or spells would be great. And crystals, of course, with properties aligned to the fairy magic are going to be good. Fairy garden supplies would be great for the fairy witch. Little miniature fairy garden accessories like tiny houses or figurines. You could grab a toad house, anything like that. Seeds uh, for flowers that attract fairies are going to be great. And also maybe some magical clothing. Flowing, um, very loose, fairy-inspired dresses or skirts. Maybe even uh, some witchy boots or shoes with a magical touch. All right, fire witchcraft. Now, a fire witch is someone who works directly with fire and the fire element. Now, align with those and you will be all set for gifts. <laughs> Gemstone jewelry, you know, grab the fire energy with the carnelian, citrine, or garnet. Love the garnet with fire energy. Uh, for artwork, though, um, look for prints that feature fiery elements such as flames, a dragon maybe, phoenix. Candles, go for the scented candles in warm, fiery scents like cinnamon, ginger, and clove. Uh, clothing, you know, again, phoenix and flames are good here. For essential oils, fragrances like cinnamon, ginger, or frankincense even can be used in rituals and meditation um, practices with fire magic. Now, fire witchcraft is something I really love and use often. So more personal things that I would like would be like a beautiful athame, a ceremonial dagger, or a set of ritual candles. Fire pit, love mine, use it often. <laughs> if they have an outdoor space, a fire pit, and you know, fire pit accessories, um, outdoor lighting, all of that can help with their, with their fire uh, craft. Decorations in that theme are good too. Look for decorative items like throw pillows, blankets, wall art, you know, anything, any fiery type design. For crystals, go for the sunstone, red jasper, or fire agate to complement their energy. Now, if they are a coffee or a tea drinker, look for blends that incorporate spicy and maybe warming flavors to evoke that element of fire. And of course, witchy items like a cauldron mug, Pentacle jewelry or a rune inscribed pendant can be great for a fire witch. All right, what about green witchcraft? The green witch will focus on the earth element for sure, but the practice really does blend into the forest and cottage witch, uh, fairy witch, and the kitchen witch. So, so many of the things listed earlier will work with them. You know, an herb garden kit will be great here. If you are looking for specific green witch type crystals, I would focus on a set of crystals like clear quartz, amethyst, and maybe green adventuring. If you're leaning towards essential oils, the green witch will probably like lavender, eucalyptus, and frankincense, which are commonly or typically used in aromatherapy and spell work with them. Cast iron cauldron is perfect for mixing herbs, so that would be a good gift. And of course, a drying rack, <laughs> so the green witch can dry their own home-grown herbs. With jewelry, grab ones with symbols like pentacles, moons, or herbs, and be sure to incorporate items from natural materials like wood and stone. Now, our green witches really pull towards that earth element. So for artwork, a piece of art featuring botanical or nature themes can enhance the ambience of their sacred space. And lastly, a guidebook that helps them identify and understand the properties of various herbs can be a practical and educational gift. All right, hedge witchcraft. Now, a hedge witch is someone who incorporates both sides of the spirit world in their practice. They are usually solitary practitioners who are very, very close to nature and will use the elements of nature with healing. Now, hedge witches have close ties with animals and their homes. 
So shopping ideas for Hedge Witch and someone who can cross realms might be astral projection tools like dream journals for recording their experiences during travel, uh, maybe meditation cushions or, you know, something or some type of comfortable seating for extended meditation sessions, or maybe even, you know, soundscapes or meditation type music for creating a conductive atmosphere. If you are leaning towards crystals and stones for the hedge witch, I would look for Labradorite, which is known for enhancing psychic abilities and spiritual connection. Amethyst, um, that's believed to aid in spiritual growth and intuition. And of course, Moonstone associated with intuition and connection to the divine. A good essential oils for travel are frankincense, myrrh, um, sandalwood also. Customized tools would be great here. You know, handcrafted or personalized items like wands, athames, or talismans. Even ritual knives or bowl lines with unique and you know, meaningful designs would be a great gift. Um, adding altar items would be good, like statues or representations of deities or spirit guides. Um, let's see what else. Really anything that holds a symbolic personal significance, right? Um, energy cleansing tools are going to be super good for anyone who does astral travel. All of us, right? <laughs> Travel or no travel, we all need cleansing tools. Um, but things for this would be like selenite crystals or wands for clearing energy and ritual tools for creating sacred space. Okay, we're at the K's. Kitchen witch. Kitchen witchcraft is another type of our practice that may have other names or be really similar to other types of practices like a green witch, a hearth witch, and a cottage witch. There's a little kitchen witch inside all of us, I think, <laughs> as that is probably where we do many of our spell creations. It's where we do some of our best work, regardless of how we're planning on using it. But a kitchen witch is someone who, you know, more than likely is bringing family together through the energy of their kitchen. Now, I know I have said a handful of times already, give them the gift of growing their own magical herbs, like you know, basil, thyme, lavender, whatever it is. You can include pots, seeds, soil, all the little tools needed to make the plant successful. Um, but also think about kitchen utensils with a magical or whimsical twist. For example, like a wooden spoon with carved symbols, a cauldron-shaped mug, a set of enchanted cooking utensils, something like that. Now, a customized recipe book would be great for a kitchen witch. You can create a personalized recipe book with some of your favorite recipes and then leave some blank pages for the kitchen witch to add their own magical concoctions. A crystal infused water bottle might be great for a kitchen witch. We all need reminders to drink water. <laughs> we can encourage hydration with a water bottle featuring crystals known for their positive energy, such as amethyst or maybe rose quartz. Now, magical cookware for the kitchen witch? Hmm, yes, please. Find unique and aesthetically pleasing cookware like cast iron cauldrons, maybe mystical themed baking dishes, something that would really enhance their workings in the kitchen. We can gift magical spices and seasonings too, like a collection of high quality, unique spices and seasonings. You can include exotic blends or those associated with you know, magical properties like cinnamon for protection or basil for love. Now look for kitchen towels too, maybe with some tarot card images or rune designs to add that magical touch. And cookbooks, yeah, they probably have plenty already, but see if you can find a cookbook that incorporates magical elements or maybe focuses on the spiritual side of cooking, like, you know, the witch's cookbook or a book on kitchen magic. Also a handmade kitchen witch doll or a servitor. You know, consider finding or making yourself a cute little witch doll to serve as a guardian of the kitchen or even find or make a servitor to protect their kitchen and home. All right, lunar witchcraft. Our moon witches, well, their practice is going to be focused on the magical workings and rituals from the energies and cycles associated with the moon. They pay attention to what phase the moon is in and will often tailor their spells and rituals accordingly. Gifting a lunar witch is not difficult. <laughs> Just focus on the moon. Consider artwork or wall decor, maybe that depicts the different phases of the moon. This could be a beautiful print, a 
wall hanging or even a moon phase calendar. There are so many great options on Etsy. Don't mean to keep plugging Etsy, but there's a lot of great options. Um, crystals associated with the moon, of course, our beautiful moonstone, selenite, clear quartz, those all make great gifts. Um, those crystals are believed to enhance lunar energies and intuition. Now, moon-inspired jewelry, such as necklaces or earrings featuring crescent moons or full moons, those can be wonderful too. Now, a tarot deck with the moon or with a moon-themed imagery can be a really thoughtful gift for a moon witch who enjoys divination. Look for decks that incorporate you know, lunar symbolism in the artwork. I personally love the deck that I have. Uh, candles. Let's see, go for ones that are specifically designed with lunar or celestial images, you know, that are going to enhance the moon witches' rituals. They can be associated with different faces of the moon. They can be shaped like the moon. You've got lots of options there. Now, if your moon witch likes baths, go for some bath salts, oils, or maybe soaps infused with ingredients associated with the moon, like lavender or chamomile. Um, put together a kit that includes items for moon rituals, such as you know, herbs, candles, crystals, all corresponding to different moon phases. A journal would be good here too, um, something with the moon phases, the, you know, maybe lunar calendar. Um, some space for reflection can be a great gift for a moon witch who enjoys recording their magical experiences. Now, incense blends with scents like sandalwood, jasmine, myrrh, um, which are associated with lunar energies are going to be good too. And of course, clothing. <laughs> Look for clothing items or accessories featuring moon prints or lunar symbols. Now, this can go down to scarves, hats, or even I've seen leggings, right? <laughs> There's moon legging type stuff. Lots of gift ideas on that one. All right, sea witch. All right, sea witchcraft. You know, don't just think of the water element here. Well, of course, it's a big part of being a sea witch for sure, you'll actually find this practice to be very tied to the ocean and all things related, like deities, driftwood, shells, beach magic, on and on. So gifting to a sea witch can include things that connect them to the ocean and water. Now, a carefully curated collection of seashells, sea glass, uh, maybe some other ocean treasures can be a beautiful and meaningful gift for a sea witch. Look for unique things and items that are visually appealing, like Jewelry that is inspired by the sea, such as seashell necklaces, maybe a mermaid pendant, um, or pieces featuring oceanic gemstones like aquamarine or larimar can be good for a sea witch. High quality sea salt or a set of gourmet sea salts from different parts of the world can be a practical and great gift for the sea witch. Um, sea salt is actually often used in purification and protection rituals, so... Double, double good there. <laughs> um, you can look for artwork or prints, you know, featuring marine life, mermaids, or, you know, ocean landscapes. I know mermaids are listed a lot. If you go back to my Fae and Fairy episode, mermaids are not always nice. So just be careful um, of what your sea witch is actually into and what they work with um, before giving her a bunch of mermaid stuff. Uh, let's see, candles <clears throat> in shapes of blue or green, of course, scented with ocean-inspired fragrances. There's like sea breeze, salt air. Those are going to be great gifts. Um, a book, maybe, on marine biology, folklore about sea creatures, or novel set um, by the sea could be a beautiful holiday gift. Now, a good gift idea, I think, for a sea witch could be um, seaweed-based skincare products. Maybe some bath salts with sea minerals or seaweed-infused beauty products can be super luxurious and a great holiday gift. Now, decorative items like anchors, ship wheels, you know, maritime-themed uh, throw pillows, those can all be great gifts as well. Or, you know, get personal. Put together a personal kit that includes items for sea magic. Grab your sea salt, shells, vial of ocean water, maybe a guidebook on um, ocean spells. I think that would be fun. All right, secular witchcraft. So this type of practice does not worship any higher beings. No deities. They do not worship gods or goddesses. They are, in fact, non-religious. They are spiritual and work with energy, but the energy is general, like not specific to a being or a deity. 
And you may think this type of witch is hard to buy for, but really their practice is no different except for that one element of being non-religious. In fact, just about everything I have mentioned thus far for gift giving works. Just remove the religious element, if there in fact is one, and focus more on the symbolic aspect of how it can help their craft. Crystals, gemstones, herbs, spice sets, candles, book of shadows, grimoire, tarot cards, oracle decks, altar decorations, essential oils, witchcraft tools, calendars, workshops, all of that. None, none of it is specifically religious and all are great options for the secular witch. All right, how about a solar witch? You know, solar witchcraft, we, we sure do talk about the moon and lunar witches a lot, but what about the sun witches and the solar witchcraft where the main power and focus comes from the sun? Think bright and warm for shopping here because we can focus on the sun's energy for our gifts. Look for jewelry featuring sun motifs such as sun pendants, earrings, uh, bracelets even. Gold or yellow is going to be your color here. Gold and yellow gemstones like citrine can also align well with the sun's energy. Sunflowers, those are often associated with the sun. Um, consider giving sunflower seeds for planting or a potted sunflower plant. This brings the essence of the sun right into their living space. Think about solar power decorations too, such as you know garden lights, lanterns, or decorative items that harness sunlight to create a warm glow. They can be used um, both indoors and outdoors. Now for ritual tools, look for a golden athame or ritual knife, maybe a sun-themed wand or pentacle with sun symbolism. These tools can be used in their magical workings and their craft directly. Now select essential oils or perfumes with scents that evoke warmth and sunlight. Think of citrusy oils like orange or bergamot. Um, those can be particularly fitting for a sun witch. And for crystals, look for ones that sparkle and catch the light and can mimic the radiant energy of the sun. Think about clear quartz, citrine, or sunstone. Your sun witch can hang them near a window to capture and reflect sunlight. Now, a solar calendar or sundial might be a great gift for the sun witch. A solar calendar that tracks the sun's movements or a sundial for their garden can be very, very symbolic. All right, what about our storm witches? You know, storm witchcraft, oh, just saying that makes me want to create a spell. <laughs> I always get motivated when nature speaks, especially when she speaks loudly and aggressively and with purpose. Now, a storm witch is drawn to this type of weather, this type of energy, the storms. So what are good gifts idea for a storm witch? Well, I've got some fun ones. Think about thunder. Think about lightning and rain and how they may be using those elements in their practice. First, thunderstorm sound machine. This is great for creating a soothing environment. <laughs> I, just, I just thought that through. That might not sound soothing to you, but <laughs> the thunderstorms are actually very soothing to a lot of people. So um, creating that or mimicking that sound can be used during meditation rituals, spell magic, or honestly, simply for their relaxation. Uh, gift a rain stick. Now, a rain stick is a musical instrument that mimics the sound of the rain. It looks like almost a really long walking stick, and you kind of turn it back and forth or, you know, rock it back and forth, and it symbolizes the sound of rain. They're really amazing. So it certainly can be a symbolic and calming addition to a storm, which is space. Now, artwork, I would look for artwork or prints featuring stormy weather scenes, maybe. Jewelry, lightning bolts sound a little obvious, but <laughs> lightning bolt could be something, you know, something storming weather symbolizing um, that kind of chaotic environment. Storm witches are really adventurous, or typically they are. So consider gifting them an experience, maybe a storm chasing tour. Um, this could provide a unique and exciting opportunity to witness a storm right up close. Also, maybe a a weather forecast station. I know that's, that sounds a little geeky, but you know, those are good or a barometer, which allows them to track atmospheric changes and you know anticipate upcoming weather patterns. Those could be great gifts. Now, have you heard of a thunder drum? Well, it's also known as a thunder tube or storm drum, and it produces sounds similar to distant thunder when played. 
That could be a fun and symbolic instrument for a storm witch. Okay, last one, swamp witch. Swamp witchcraft is a very particular type of practice. And those witches really will be practicing, or more than likely will be practicing their magic alone. And while they might not live physically in or near a swamp, they do not associate it with, with city life or fall into any of the social normalities, if you will. Swamp witches um, work with a lot of mud and swamp marshy type waters. Consider gifting a selection of herbs and botanicals commonly associated with swamp magic, like Spanish moss, bay leaves, cypress needles maybe. Um, these can be used in ritual spells or as you know, decorative elements in their, in their craft. Look for artwork or prints featuring swamp landscapes, um, creatures, mystical elements, things like that. Oh, now this may sound silly, but there are candles <laughs> with scents reminiscent of swamps or bog, such as moth, earth, damp woods. Um, all of those can create an atmospheric and calming environment for a swamp witch. Also consider figurines or sculptures representing swamp creatures like alligators and snakes or frogs. These can be used as altar decorations or as symbolic representations in their personal practices. Now jewelry, you know, featuring swamp inspired motifs, absolutely. Go back for your alligators, snake designs, all those can be unique and personal. And you might also consider pieces made from materials like wood or bone. I think those are gonna help with the swamp witchcraft. Incense or resin blends with, you know, scents like cedar, myrrh, or frankincense can evoke that earthy and mystical atmosphere of a swamp. Um, consider tools for ritual and spell work in earthy tones too. You know, go for the green, brown candles, ritual knives or pentacles. All of that can complement a swamp witch's connection to the natural world. I, did I get them all? Did I do it? Ancestry witch. Ceremony and Traditional Witch, Chaos, City, Cosmic, Cottage, Crystal Witch, Dianic Witch, Divination Witch, Eclectic Witch, Elemental Witch, Fairy, Fire, Green, Hedge, Kitchen Witch, Lunar Witch, Sea, Secular, Solar, Storm, and Swamp Witch. <laughs> All right, that's a lot of witchcraft. And they sure do blend together and cross over a bunch, don't they? Well, hopefully there is something in this podcast that helps you with your shopping and gift giving for the holiday season and the witches in your life, no matter what practice they lean towards. And I know this podcast went super long, so I am not going to add any witchy work wish gifts today, but I will add that to a coming, um, to a coming episode because I do have a helpful list with some great corporate gift ideas. For now though, Thank you for sticking with me to hear all about the different types of witches and what might be on their holiday gift list. I hope you have a wonderful week and weekend, and I'll talk with you next week. Thank you for joining me today at Witchy Work Wishes, a place to find your weekly inspiration for bringing your personal witchcraft practice into your business, work, and office. For more information and additional content, please visit me online at witchyworkwishes.com. If you want to send me a personal note, please email me at info at witchyworkwishes.com. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Witchy Work Wishes.